welcome to the new Zeppelin 3.1 this is the new Zeppelin that's out and only works for version 3.1 and we're going to be going over some of the new features as we have the Zeppelin in the document and we'll be going over some of the properties down here later uh, let's go over one of the first features here of making a stencil I'll go ahead and use this character here since I don't want to paint on his eyes there I'll hide his eyes and uh, I'll go ahead and press the zap link button we'll go ahead and uh, zoom this in a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, stencil for this I'm gonna be using the color black here and I'll show you why I'm going to go over here and use the wand tool uh, because uh, the wand tool like works better when it pick it picks up from two different colors a lot better. If you got a light color, you'd always want to put a darker color on it so the wand tool will pick it up a lot better. But anyway, we'll go to the selection and save selection here. And I already got this copied on the clipboard, and the name is stencil. It must have the word, the name stencil for this to work. And I'll press OK here. Then I'll go back to File and Save. Go back to ZBrush here. And we'll pick Now. Give it a few seconds. I just got a pop-up saying place your new stencil in the Alpha. And I'm going to press the enter key at this time. And if you look over in the alpha over here, now we got a stencil. And the stencil is active, but we're going to go ahead and invert this one here. And this time I'm going to go ahead and just use the projection master with this. Give a little different color here. And we'll go back over and turn the stencil off. As you can see that it made its own stencil that I can use for it. That's pretty nifty. Alright, let's go to step two here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the properties here. Uh, we got uh, we're gonna go drop down here to custom one and custom two and if I was to rotate the character in any position and press custom one a little LCD light came on indicating that the uh, it stored that position so if I turn it this position now it stored that position so these are just custom positions that you can store we can clear all the positions. I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key down and snap it into the front position. I'm going to press the front button here. And when I do, the little LCD light came on the right hand side. And also it did it to the back side too, for the back button. What this does, it stored the front position and it stored the opposite side in two different buttons. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me turn this over here. Snap this into the right position. Let's say I didn't want to snap it all the way in the right, just a little offset to it. So I'll go ahead and uh, press the right button. Well, that little LCD came on and so the left. So it stored the right and left with just a little bit of offset. Let's go ahead and turn a, get a new texture here. So let's go back over to the left here. And if I was to shift snap it, you'll see that it's in the correct axis left. But you can see that I had stored a little offset there. I can save these for later on if I press the save view. And I'm going to overwrite my other one here. 
let's just say for instance uh, we're going to go ahead and clear all these if I was to start ZBrush up and wanted to save these positions and reuse them we'll just go ahead and uh, load them but before I do you can see that if there is no positions the zap link view button down here is grayed out meaning uh, I'll show you that here in a second but we'll go ahead and load these up and when I set that there it's going to load them and the zap link view button came on and uh, we can make uh, character sheets if I press this here and I'll zoom up a little bit it stored each position and made a little film strip out of it. Let's go back to ZBrush here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press the zap link and like I said the zap link view button on it's gonna give me all the views of the front back right and left where I can texture on all these so I'll go ahead and uh, just press the zap link here We'll update this here as you can see here we look over in the layer palette we got the front Z shaded it says do not edit and by default it automatically went to the front view and it'll look white down here and these are the layers that I'm going to be editing so let's say I was to add some color here Turn the size down just a little bit. And what I need to do is I'm going to turn off the front shaded view and the front view. This will let me see the back view now. Now I need to skip down and select the back layer, not the shaded layer because it says do not edit. So we'll go ahead and uh, give this a different color. And we'll do one, say, around here. And what we'll do is we'll turn off these two layers. Skip down one. Now we can edit to the right one. And we'll do one here and so on and I can keep on going down but I'll just do three right now and I'll just go up to file save go back to ZBrush and press re-enter ZBrush and give it a few seconds now I'm press accept wait a few more seconds accept this is for the back and one for the front and give it a few more seconds here to catch up as you can see it textured the three views that I had which is pretty nifty if for some reason that I didn't want to do all the views I would just go ahead and uncheck the zap link view where it's grayed out go back up here and we'll update that as you can see over here now we just got the one layer that we're going to be editing and we'll save that go back to ZBrush and that pretty much uh, wraps it up on uh, the new features of ZBrush Zeppelin, which is pretty cool. But anyway, thank you very much.